They're up. They're up, up, up. And football fans want to know if they can take a pause from saying, why? Eagles, why? Hi, everybody. Welcome to Why Eagles Why. Dave Fontempo, along with Pete Amato and Bill Gelman, talking about the resurgent Philadelphia Eagles, who are eight and seven and on the verge of the playoffs. Yes, on the verge of the playoffs. As you know, we do our program in four quarters plus overtime. Please hit like and subscribe to be notified about future videos. So, Pete, Bill, and I have not only been doing the program, but we've been texting each other during the game, and uh, we have quite a lot to go over about how this team has done well. I'll throw this one out to you guys first. The Eagles, as they invade Washington, are favored for the sixth week in a row. Do you guys know anybody who would have ever thought that at any point in this season? No. I believe they did. (laughs) No, I I, – yeah, I didn't even think they were going to make the playoffs. And and now the thing about this year's NFC is, is you know, other than the top three teams, top four teams maybe, um, the rest are uh, – it's a crapshoot. I mean, it's like teams just uh, between the, the injuries, uh, the getting on and not having enough players to play due to COVID. And um, – it's just a weird season. It's like it's like there's a whole bunch of teams that are either eight and seven, seven and eight, and you know you have a Washington team this week that's that's you know suddenly going to look like they're going to finish the year with a losing record. And, and they were the division champions last year, and they were ahead of the Eagles. It wasn't that long ago on the show, Washington led the Eagles by a game, and the Eagles needed Dallas to step up and and make it all even. So, so Pete, what is jumping out for you when you look at this uh, Eagles team in recent weeks? Um, I think it's no surprise. I've, I've been on, um, been on team offensive line the last few weeks. Uh, they just continue to surprise me, to be honest. I mean, um, they they just continue to dominate no matter what team they play. Um, they, if they're, if there's an injury, they, they throw in a backup and the backup you usually, uh, even if they're in for a couple of plays, they, they seem to not miss a beat with them. Um, Malata, Kelsey are both dominating um, their, their position, dominating their men the entire game. Um, Lane Johnson as well. Um, it's, it's pretty great that they all came together, actually, when they were talking about the Pro Bowl and, and, and whatnot, and they all said Lane Johnson should have got a spot. I, I agree. I think Lane Johnson and Malata should have got a spot in the Pro Bowl. But, yeah, it's, it's that line that's really um, – kind of standing out to me. I, I think they need to keep relying on that line. They, they need to um, not try to overthink or, or, or try to think they're the smartest um, team in the, uh, in the room. They, they just need to keep doing what they're doing best. And that's running the ball and, and getting behind that big offensive line. I just think if they keep that in mind and w- without trying to overthink anything, I think, uh, I think they'll be all right. I think they'll get a smooth sailing into the playoffs. Lane Johnson tried to pad his stats with a touchdown reception against exactly. the Giants. That uh, always will help. You guys have this that is problem? interesting, right? This is interesting about when this team shows up for their games, the alarm clock. The second half of the games uh, have been great for them. They got uh, 31 second half points against the Giants, but it was 3-3 at the half. Uh, what do you guys make of these slow first halves that uh, we've seen in the Eagles prior to the blowout wins against Washington and uh, New York. Bill, we'll start with you. Uh, I'm starting to realize that I can go out and run errands during the first half of the games because they, they you know, well, maybe one of these weeks with the playoffs coming up, they'll, they'll realize you can, you got, you got to play uh, four quarters, not two. Uh, and Fox actually uh, put up a stat at halftime that it's, uh, I think in the 124 meetings, of uh, that the Eagles and Giants have played each other. The first time ever, the score was tied 3-3 at halftime. Wow. Yeah, so. that, was, <laughs> that was pretty interesting. So now what happens, Bill, is that uh, – and, and for those not familiar, Bill goes out and does an errand, or he's with the family, and he comes home at halftime, and then the Eagles light it up. So we're thinking you should let them know when you're home and that they can go ahead and tee it up. 
Anyone have Howie's number? <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they may need yours. Now, now, Pete, what do you make of this uh, uh, turning the switch on at halftime the way the Eagles have in the last couple of games? Um, I don't know. The only thing I can point to is they're young and inexperienced. Um, they might be getting a little too overhyped um, in the beginning of the game, getting each other pumped up and coming out with a little bit of nerves. Um, that's, I mean, as far as them being young, I mean, their, their whole entire coaching staff is young. They're starting quarterbacks young. The wide, best wide receivers young. Um, they have a young offensive, uh, part of their offensive line is young. I mean, so that's the, that's what I'm looking at right now. I mean, they, when you're young, you have, you're inexperienced. And when you're inexperienced, nerves can come in play. So maybe they have those nerves in the first half and then uh, they kind of calm down. I mean, they realize the score is only three, three going into to the second half. Uh, Sirianni might, might be great. Um, a halftime speech giver. I mean, we've seen them come out of the, um, the tunnel in the half and basically turn the game around probably three or four times this year. So uh it's pretty impressive, but they definitely are going to have to play four quarters um, if they make the playoffs because they're going to be playing against a playoff team, um, a team not like the Giants or Washington where they can have a bad half. They, they can't really have a bad half in a playoff game. You're playing against a, a, a decent team, so um, they're going to learn how, how to fix it. They're going to, they're, going to, they're going to have to fix it. They're going to have to get those nerves down somehow. The playoffs, once an elusive dream, now an expectation. And we'll take a closer look at that in the second quarter. <laughs> second quarter of Why Eagles Why. The Eagles invade the Washington football team. At midweek, they were a four-point favorite to beat the team that they had just defeated back at the link. And this win could almost cement the playoff spot. But before we go to that picture, uh, Bill, you've got an injury report. And how does that impact things? Well, um, as you guys know, a couple uh, running backs left the game on Sunday. Uh, Sanders has a broken hand, so he could miss the rest of the regular season. And Jordan Howard is suffering from a neck stinger. Uh, this, uh, Sirianni, I think, said, uh, said he could play this Sunday, but that he's still being evaluated. So we're back to this uh, next man up mentality, which means it's the, the, both those guys are out. You're going to have your top bag being Boston Scott and then uh, Kenny G, Kenneth Gainwell, I guess would be the backup. And I guess they'll be bringing someone up from the practice squad to, to fill up the running back core. So I, I think Howard will play, but it, it's like, he just like they, they seem to have that momentum going. Sanders seemed to get, be getting back into his groove. Howard has the number two back and Boston Scott, you know, he, he's, he's a giant killer. He scored against the giants on Sunday. Like he always does. I think the bulk of his career touchdowns have come against the Giants. Um, so I, I think that's key because they're the number one rushing offense in the league. So it'll be interesting to see. Uh, you know, Pete touched on the offensive line. The offensive line is is healthy, but how how's this all going to play out? I think that's that's a big wild card unknown going into Sunday's game that we have to uh, monitor as as we get closer to kickoff. Well, Pete, that leads us to the possibility that maybe they take some of the emphasis off the run and look for Devontae Smith and Dallas Goddard. I guess if there was a week that that could happen, this would be it. Yeah, it could possibly be it. Um, I think they need to, um, before they do that, I think they need to start um, putting Devontae as the number one receiver on many of these plays. I feel like he's not the first read on a lot of these plays, um, unless Hertz is just not seeing him, which is possible we've seen him uh, miss receivers in the past. But um, I just think Devontae Smith is the real deal. I think they need to um, seem to, to draw up some more plays specifically, specifically for him. Um, and I feel like he's just, sometimes he's just out there as a, uh, as a, as a second read, third read. I feel like he needs to be the first read on most of the plays. And we, yeah, they have to get Goddard in the, um, in got to get Goddard in the action as well, because I mean, he's, he did have a couple drops last game, but I mean, He's one of our most talented offensive players. So if the run game is going to lack, which I don't think it will. I mean, we've seen in the past that this offensive line um, can carry the load no matter who's running behind them. I, I think Boston Scott is, is a good runner. I think Jordan Howard will still play. And, um, and Gainwell is, our, is, is more like a scat back um, so he can catch, uh, catch the ball out of the backfield. But um, 
So I think, I don't think the run game is going to take a hit too bad. I mean, Miles Sanders wasn't here most of the season. So um, I'm not really worried about that, um, especially if Jordan Howard plays. All right. We'll see how that all plays out. And for you, Devontae Smith fans, crazy replay. Don't think I'd ever seen it before. Touchdown call, overturned, and then overturned again. So it was a touchdown after all at the game-breaking TD against the Giants. Well, we'll take a further overview of the Eagles and the Washington football team in the third quarter. <laughs> why Eagles? Why third quarter? The Eagles have put themselves in an excellent position to reach the postseason. If they beat Washington, they eliminate New Orleans and Atlanta, two teams behind them. And then it would only be them and the Minnesota Vikings for a playoff spot. But Pete, even with all of that, Minnesota has to go to Lambeau Field and beat Green Bay. So for the Eagles, everything that they could want has been falling into place these last couple of weeks. Yeah, yeah. Fortunately, it has. Um... I mean, we from the even when they had a losing record, we looked at their record ahead of time. And I mean, we looked at their schedule ahead of time and we kind of knew this was going to happen. We knew that the, the schedule was going to be more in their favor at the end of the season. Um, but 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 as far as uh, Minnesota, the kind of who they're battling the spot for, they're playing probably the MVP of the league and Aaron Rodgers next week. So um, that definitely goes. Um, goes with us right there. That, that definitely helps the Eagles um, chances of making the playoffs. So I, we look at it or I'm looking at it as it's um, it's up to the Eagles right now. And they, they need to take care of business and not worry about anything else. And I think if they take care of business, they should make the playoffs. So, um, so we'll, we'll say it's up to them and let's see if they can, let's see if they can, uh, can do it. I mean, it's not that big of a task um, looking at who they're playing, right. This, especially this week. So um, they should be able to do it. Well, if the Eagles win and the Packers win, forget week 17 as far as needing the game. And uh, that could make up an interesting week 17 scenario in which neither the Eagles nor the Dallas Cowboys uh, yeah, need the game. But, but Bill, when you look at this Eagles-Washington game, Eagles defeat Washington, then Washington gets beat 56-14 to 14 by the Dallas Cowboys. Now, what has to be the mindset of the Eagles – playing a team that is now out of it? Well, I think you have to look at it from Washington's perspective. You're talking about a game, a division game that was on national TV and they got flat out embarrassed. Uh, I don't care who's healthy, who's not healthy. I think any team that gets embarrassed like that, um, you're going to come out and play, show, some, show something in, in the, in the uh, at least the beginning of that game. So the Eagles need to be better prepared to, to just put the foot on the gas from the beginning and, and not let up because Washington, you know, even though they got nothing to play for, there, there's always a pride factor with teams. You know, we're not talking about a team tanking like they do in the NBA. We're talking, you know, you want, you want to show something towards the end of the season, especially since the game's in Washington. It's a division game, so these division games are never pretty. I think the Eagles are going to win, but I don't think it's going to be as lopsided as, as we saw against the saw in the Eagles Giants game and certainly not as lopsided uh, from two weeks ago when when Washington was pretty much playing with a, uh, you know, a JV team. Yeah, and Pete, I think that Washington would play tough for at least a half. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, I think they're going to play tough. I mean, they they love I mean, teams love this role to play a spoiler if they don't have a chance to make the playoffs. And another thing, it's a division game. And, and we've seen this this year that, especially in the first half, we've had trouble with division teams. I mean, and especially in the first half, um, it's not going to be an easy game. I don't think, I mean, at first, in the beginning, it's not going to be an easy game. I mean, it's going to be an ugly game. Um, it's going to be um, tight in the, in the, at least up the first quarter, maybe, this, maybe into the second quarter. I think eventually uh, the cream will rise to the top, and I feel like the Eagles will pull away with it, but um, they can't make huge mistakes in the beginning of the game. They can't make big turnovers to kind of, uh, to kind of put themselves on, on a lopsided, um, lopsided game right there because if they do get down by too much, then um, you're giving Washington a little bit of hope, 
And, um, and that's the worst thing you can give to a team that basically doesn't think they have a chance. So for Philadelphia, a realistic plan, stay in it and then win it. We'll look at the Eagles more in the fourth quarter. Fourth quarter of why Eagles, why? When we started this program, the team was coming off four wins last year, and they've already doubled that with, a, with one game left by that comparison. And they're likely heading to the playoffs. So, Bill, I guess when you look at the coaching staff, you look at Nick Sirianni, it uh, looks like some credit is due. Yeah, at the beginning of the season, you know, after the Falcons game, common theme among us was uh, Sirianni has his team undisciplined, unprepared, and, and they just, his lack of head coaching experience, he wasn't even a, a coordinator on the pro uh, level. So between the, the young coaching staff and Sirianni's lack of experience, it's like we were just writing him off and saying, oh, Howie made a bad coaching decision. Jeffrey made a bad coaching decision. What were they thinking? Now, you know, they, they've come back. You know, they've gotten in, uh, fallen behind these last couple of weeks. And I think it's uh, credit is due when this team, when the season's on the line and there's something to win for, they seems to be making the necessary adjustments. He's using the players how they should be used in, in a lot of situations. Uh, you know, granted, they still have a lot of holes and you can't put them in the same conversation with Green Bay, the Rams, Tampa Bay, you know, those teams are on different level. But I'm, I'm giving them so much credit that I, I did a, what I call the trading places uh, bet. I put $1 on him to win coach of the year this morning just because it's, it's you know, I don't think he's going to win it, but it's uh, just for fun. Let's see what happens because he, he does deserve credit for what he's done. Well, once word of that dollar bet that you made hits every place, that line is going to jump. Just remember that. Uh, how about you now, Pete, uh, as you look at the uh, evolution of uh, Nick Sirianni, what are your thoughts on the coaching staff and other issues regarding the Eagles? Yeah, I think he does deserve um, some, some credit, um, but I also think he deserved some of the criticism in the beginning of the season as far as um, not as far as having the team ready and stuff like that. I mean, that's going to, is what it is, but um, his play calling was, was very uh, minimal and, and questionable in the beginning of the season. And um, we did say that he was a young coach and it, and it, and it should have been talked about, but you can tell that he was a young coach. He learned, he's kind of learning his way as he goes. And he's um, his uh, play calls are a lot more, a lot more creative. He's, he's using, um, He's using routes that he wouldn't have used in the beginning of the season. And um, I do have to give him credit for um, keeping this team ready and keeping this team um, going, especially with, with, with a lot of the injuries happening. Uh, on the other side, on the defense, uh, with Jonathan Gaddon, now that's something totally different, in my opinion. I, I'm not still not really confident in Jonathan Gaddon. Uh, we're playing against some bad offenses, so I can't really tell like what how he's really been that <laughs> – if he's been a good coach or not, but um, anytime we are playing against an, a half decent offense, you see, they kind of do whatever they want to us. Um, I still think he needs to be more aggressive. I, I still think he, he calls a, a defense that's just way too soft and, um, and he does need some help. He needs, he needs linebackers. Uh, probably needs another defensive back and a, um, and probably a, a lineman, a defense lineman uh, next year too. So we'll see, uh, we'll see what happens with that. And as far as any other unknowns, I think Jalen Hurts is still an unknown. Um, going into this season, it was, okay, let's give him this year, see if he's the future. But I don't know if many questions have been answered with him yet. Um, he's been so inconsistent uh, this season. In my opinion, the answers haven't been um, answered. I don't see him as a um, our future right now, but I don't know if he is. He, he could be. Um, so... We might have the same questions going into next season, depending on what happens in the playoffs, if we make the playoffs. So um, he just needs to be more consistent. He, he, even from, he's not even that he's consistent from the game to game. He's inconsistent from half to half. So, uh, so we'll see what happens with, the with these next couple of games. We'll see if he makes the playoffs and we'll see if, um, if he does make the playoffs, if, if he can kind of uh, show that he does belong as the franchise quarterback. Well, some insight into the Jalen Hurts-Carson Wentz quandary. The Eagles traded 
Carson Wentz to the Indianapolis Colts to make room for Jalen Hurts. And now, Bill, this looks like a trade that worked out for both sides because both Hurts and Wentz are piloting playoff teams. Yeah, Wentz I wasn't sure about at the beginning of the season. And he's really come on um, the, the second half here. I mean, granted, he has Jonathan Taylor, who's probably, in my mind, the best running back in the league. Um, you know, Derrick Henry's up there, but he's he's sidelined this year. So, he, you know, I, I, I hands down, I think Jonathan Taylor is the top running back. And uh, Carson and, and the Colts have really stepped up late um, in the season. And, you know, they're, they're a team to watch uh, right now. And then, then you have the Eagles, who Jalen Hurts is still young. He's still got a lot of room to grow. Um, I don't think I don't think he's an upper tier quarterback. I don't know if he's a quarterback of the future, but he, he's showing some leadership, which in you know his first full season in the NFL as a starter, I think that that really uh, shows something. You, you know, let, let's see where he goes. You know, years three and four, and you might see something more from him. And you got to you got to put talent around him because you know other other than Devontae Smith. You know, who are the wide receivers that you can count on? I think Quez Watkins is a wide receiver of the future. Dallas Goddard is a nice piece. But when you have uh, Dallas Goddard so wide open in a game that they could see him from MetLife Stadium over on Sunday, um, <laughs> you know, you can't miss plays like that. You got you to gotta, uh, be able to read the field better. I think he touched on that earlier. Uh, but I, I, I like his, the leadership he's showing and, um, and, and, you know, winning when the games matter most. So let, let's see where he goes, you know, should the Eagles make the playoffs, you know, and that'll be a real uh, test for us to, to see how, how much, how Hertz is maturing in his, in his uh, first full season as a starter. Yes. And that play you're referring to with Goddard open in the end zone, that cost me $25 and 80 cents. If we're going to talk about issues. So uh, yes, he was uh, wide open and straight ahead, our parting shots. Parting shots on why Eagles, why mine. Check out Ben Roethlisberger Monday night. It's Pittsburgh hosting the Cleveland Browns. This could be the final year for Big Ben. This could be the final game he plays at home. He's won two Super Bowl rings. He is fifth in all-time passing yardage. But I think this is it for Big Ben and the Steelers. We don't look for them in the playoffs, so watch the game Monday night. That's my parting shot. How about you, Pete? Uh, my parting shot's going to be a Pete's pick. Uh, I believe I'm 12 and three right now. And um, I usually try to stay away from the Eagles for, <laughs> for any type of betting, but uh, I feel like this line is way too nice to, to, to not to let up. Um, right now, points bet has the Eagles at minus three um, for an odds of one uh, minus 110 odds. So I'm going to go with the Eagles at minus three. I'm going to give the points. Um, and um, I think they're going to beat Washington by a lot more than three points. Well, Pete's been on the Ching train. How close will he be to that bet? Bill, what is your uh, final score? I'll say that uh, you called 32 to nine for the Eagles and Giants. And you were right there with the Eagles beating the Giants 34 to 10. Uh, what is your inkling on a final score for the Eagles? I think this game is going to be close early on. I'm going to be staying home watching the whole game. So the Eagles will show up early <laughs> and I, I see the Eagles pulling away in this one. Let's go 28, 17, which will cover Pete's pick. All right. So there's some insight uh, into the week and the Eagles will for all intents and purposes, clinch a playoff spot with a win. They'll eliminate at least two of the teams. And then if green Bay beats Minnesota, and we're talking about, do they need the game next week? So that's the episode for this week. Thanks for tuning in. For Peter Motto and Bill Gellman, great to see you guys. This is Dave Bontepo saying, talk to you next time on Why Eagles Why. Happy New Year. <laughs> <laughs>